The Kintsugi shells are, without any question, my favorite pieces to work on. They're not just shell pendants. They are individual, unique works of art, like a sculpture or a painting. The fact that these shells would be normally discarded or overlooked, that's what makes them especially wonderful to me. That's what makes them absolutely unique. As a child, I was taught that broken and discarded things have value. When I was four, my grandpa would uh, set me down with an old radio or a television, one that had been thrown out for junk, and he had this rusty toolbox. It was dented and it was full of screwdrivers with cracked heads and, and tape on the handles. He would tell me, take all that stuff apart because something in there still works. And we would save the vacuum tubes and the wiring and any other parts in there that looked good. And my other grandfather, he was an excellent and accomplished woodcarver. He taught my dad how to carve and then they both taught me. Whatever scrap pieces that they would cut off of their carvings, all of that was saved. They said no matter how small that piece of oak or that piece of walnut is, you, you will be able to use it somehow, sometime. And those scrap pieces in the cardboard boxes, those are what they gave me to learn how to carve. And I carved my first pieces out of those. I love collecting shark's teeth on the beach. That's one of my favorite things in the world to do. Shark's teeth are the quintessential discarded object. I mean, sharks drop them by the hundreds during their lifetime. And it's one of the discarded objects that most people can recognize as having some sort of value. Uh, my first time that we went to the Outer Banks, I was hunting for shark's teeth there, but I could not find any. It's not a good place to find them, but I did find broken pieces of shells. And the colors on these shells fascinated me. At the time, I was learning how to cut and polish gemstones as a hobby. So I thought, oh, these would polish up. So I took some of these shells home to try and polish. And that is when the Sand and Shore Shop was born. The idea for the Kintsugi shells came up about two years later when we were at Myrtle Beach. And there was a family who had had their umbrella and stuff set up next to us. and. They had this little girl who was running down to the waves and picking up shells and bringing them back to her mother. And I heard her come up the one time and do the mommy, mommy and hand the shell to her mother. And what she said next stuck in my mind. Oh, honey, this shell has holes in it. Go get a pretty one. But later on, I thought to myself, why is this shell not pretty? Because it has a hole in it. So it was the next day we'd gone down to the beach and we set up our umbrella and things, and it was right where we were the day before. And beside us was this little pile of shells that was half buried in the sand. And I thought, what's wrong with that shell that the mother did not think it was pretty enough? So I went over and I rooted around through the sand and I found a shell that had a bunch of holes in it. And I carried that with me the rest of the day. And I'm thinking, there's nothing wrong with this shell just because it has holes in it. So I started looking for other shells with holes. And I found a bunch of these shells with holes and scars and scorings across them. And I looked at it and it's like, some of these are beautiful. The holes and the scores are made by bristle worms and boring sponges, I later found out. And there's these beautiful patterns that get traced across these shells. So I brought some of these shells back with me. So when I got home, I sat down with these shells and, you know, I looked at them very closely and I realized that these shells are just beautiful with all these scores and holes in them. I thought, how can I polish these and still keep these beautiful markings that the boring sponges and the bristle worms have put onto these shells? My daughter is a big fan of Japanese culture and she had introduced me to the art of Kintsugi. And I thought to myself, hmm, Kintsugi, that's fixing broken pottery with lacquer and gold. I could do the same thing with these shells, except I'm not fixing something that's broken. I'm enhancing the beauty that has been imparted to these things by these, by these sea creatures. 
So after experimenting for quite some time with different types of epoxies and pigments, I came up with one that matched the hardness of the shell. Then I did my very first actual shell and it was beautiful. And I realized that I need to do that with these shells because they're not broken. They're not unbeautiful. There's extreme beauty imparted to them by these sea creatures that leave their mark on it. Each one of these shells at one time was a living creature. And when this creature passed away, it left behind its legacy as a shell. And then the ocean works on this shell to try to bring out some of the beauty that's hidden. For there's every color of the rainbow inside these shells. And the sea brings it out, action of the waves and the sand. And then other creatures leave their mark on there. And it's not taking away from the beauty, it is adding to the beauty of the shell. So I take these shells and fill them in with the gold and then polish them. So in taking these shells and filling in what people would consider to be defects, what I'm doing is helping people to see that this is a story of numerous lives. No matter how humble or small they may seem, this is still their story and it is captured forever onto this shell. And the story is the shell. I don't really turn these things into works of art. I am the last one in a long chain of artists that work on this shell. The clam was the first, the ocean was the next, the waves, the sand, the sea creatures, the weather, and time all work together to put these shell fragments up on the beach and then I pick them up and polish them. These Kintsugi shells will, they will be around for generations. There is no way that anyone can duplicate the beauty that nature puts into these shells. When I get to take one from the beach, and when I'm able to share that beautiful piece of art with someone who can then pass it down to their children or to their children's children, that's just a very satisfying moment.